Okay, uh, welcome to how to create materials in this tutorial. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, set up a room with lights and set up your VE rate render setup like you have it here. Uh, you can pass the tutorial. Or you can download this basic setup from the link. I will uh, have it under the description. Add a few render elements. These are V-Ray render elements you can add here. And from the list, select the ones I have selected here. And these will help us understand a little bit better what's happening with our uh, textures and uh, materials. All right. The other thing is I will lock the perspective or the camera view and render on the same same window all the time. Now the whole idea of working on 3D is to make it as realistic as possible, right? So if we have some materials that have labels like this with the names next to it, then the, uh, no one will have a problem believing that that's what they are. But if you don't have labels on them, it will be best to use the, the most appropriate objects uh, using the, the appropriate textures and, and materials like in this uh, image so they can be easily recognized by the viewer. All right. If you do this right, the photograph or the render at the end should look much more realistic than, than it was even intended. Now, we know that light is 100% part of making materials. And I have here a simulation of a room with some lights. I have some windows, some doors, and an enclosed room. I have a small table, and to which I will render this to show you that the, uh, the room is lit up by the sunlight and a couple of lights in the room. I will divide the materials into three types. Non-metals, which are regular materials like plastic, paper, cloth, wood, etc., and metals. Uh, like aluminum, copper, steel, etc. And one other one later we will use is uh, liquids or fluids. Now let's look at the light on these elements, like daylight, and let's see what's happening. Look at the diffuse tab. We'll try to understand why they call it diffuse and what's going on on the object. If I uh, try to explain a little bit here, you have a light source coming. Light is coming on top of the surface. And this light, whatever color that is, bounces off the surface of the object. And then we call these reflections. Some light will go through the object and it will be absorbed inside. And some of the light will, will um, bounce off the particles that are in the object and they will come back up, scattered in all directions. And we call this diffuse light. Now what our eyes see actually then, it's called color. So we can say that the color on an object under certain light is called diffuse color. Now what happens when we change this diffuse color? For example, selecting a shade and applying to the object a, a, a certain color. What does this have to do with white light? So let's try to See, this white light is made out of three colors, the reds, the greens, and the blues. Let's look at, for example, the sun's light. Here on this tab, it's called the filter color tab. And you will see that it's made out of 100% RGB, the three colors, at 255 uh, value each. Same thing happens with this other light. It happens to be pure white and it's all all the RGBs are at 100%. So these values act as like filters to simulate the light being absorbed into the object. So when we change the values, we are actually allowing more or less light to be reflected off the object. I will reset all these filters and I start with white light. For example, I will block all the red light here. 
or I will filter out the red. And that's what you get. If I filter out the green light, the only light coming back up is the blue light. So the object apparently has this diffused blue light color. Or you can individually you know, mix the amounts of the RGBs to get certain shade of color. So the gray bar here changes the whiteness of the general light uh, of the object. All right, so we understand diffuse color now. Well, we'll look at the uh, roughness later. Now let's look at the reflection light. It works very much like the uh, diffuse light, but the, because the reflection color comes back from inside and from outside the object, we can, we can treat it differently. It works a little bit differently. The color is somewhat blocked by the diffuse color on top. As you can see here, the shade on the object of the reflection color is not exactly the same as the one we selected. And that's because the diffuse color, which is gray, is on top of it. And it's working as a mask. If the RGB values are the same, uh, you can control the whiteness of the reflection using the gray bar. Okay, now let's see how we can add reflections to metals. We start with the basic V-ray material. We will apply this to this object. Now, some of you may not know this, but solid metals, as they come in nature, they don't have a diffuse color because most of the light has been absorbed into the metal, with some exceptions. So for this object, I will filter out all the colors landing on top of the object. Maybe we will get the color from the light reflections. Maybe a little bit of a gray color here. The glossiness gives the object its finish characteristic. The higher the number, the less rough it is, and therefore it shines a lot more. This R glossiness applies to known metals too. Now, the BRDF tab changes the way the reflection diffuses. Here are some easy presets that you can choose from. In the case of metals, we can uncheck the Fresnel reflection option here. Metals can be polished so that their reflection is almost like glass. And usually, we leave this option on for non-metals, like, you know, regular materials. The better type of BRDF reflection for metals is the microfacet type, um, at least on the last latest version of V-Rate. But the other one, the other good choice is also Ward. It simulates well the metallic reflection for some type of finish. So let's render and see what we have. So both objects show color and some reflection as well. The non-metal has more reflection on top and the metal has reflection all around. We can see that by looking at this tab and look at just the lighting, for example. Lighting is hitting uh, this object from, from, the, from all sides. No light is being reflected here or shown on the metallic object. And that's kind of using the difference between the Fresnel reflection and the non-Fresnel. Here you can see the reflection. And here you can see the reflection all around on both sides, here and here. So the Fresnel and non-Fresnel shows that difference. And as we saw before, we can apply the glossiness to both objects. Now, a better way to control the reflections, especially on metals, is by using the 3ds Max fall-off map. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make the reflections colors black here, and I will render to show you that there are no reflections and no color right now.
From the standards map of 3ds Max, you will open a falloff map and place it next to your basic material. I will use I will select from the falloff type here the perpendicular parallel type. We will look at the other ones later. This controls the transition between the light and dark areas of the light. Here's an example using falloff for the reflect map. Now in the output curve, just below the mix curve, turn on enable color map. I will control the reflections using this curve. Connect the uh, falloff map to the reflect map button. You can already see the effect of the curve here. I will render the image to see the effect and you can see that it looks just like a metallic, very shiny object. Now the default is mono here and that's what we have. I will add a point to this curve and I will right click to change it to a Bezier smooth type so we can handle this and make it uh, make the corrections as we need them. You pull this to the left up here, for example, you can see how brighter it gets and down to the right is how dark it gets. So if I render this, you can see the reflection is actually pretty low on this side now. So this shows how low reflectivity can be done. Now changing the position of these handles, you can create different reflections and also the power of the light coming up from the object. You can do all kinds of uh, combinations of curves. Now, some metals like gold or bronze reflect RGB in uh, different ways. So let me select RGB here. This way we can control each color independently. So we can see what the white light is doing in there. Let me add a point here. Use the uh, handles to control this curve. Now, all the colors are together here. We need to split them up. So if I turn off the green and the blue, I can move the red one. You get this reddish color. If I select the green only, I can, you know, maybe make more green than red in this case. Turning off the other ones, it helps me control the blue all by itself. And you get that shade. So we can get this type of reflections like anodized aluminum you know, etc. This effect can be appreciated better on curved objects. So let me show you this on a teapot. So this material looks a little bit like uh, anodized aluminum, if you have seen some materials like that. For example, gold material reflects differently. For gold material, you have to split the three colors, the RGB. In the case of gold, the red is the most reflective one. You can copy the number that is uh, changing at the bottom in the curve if you want to uh, get this type of shade for gold. The green one goes a little bit less, a little lower because it's being absorbed a little bit more than the red. And obviously the one that's absorbed a lot more than the other two is the blue light. So basically here's an idea of how to make gold material. We'll render this and, you know, it depends how polished your surface you want it to be. You can control it using the glossiness amount.
If we want to be more accurate, we have to know the wavelength values of RGV on gold. This tutorial is just a simple, basic idea of how we can make materials in a simpler way, as most of my tutorials are. So here's gold. Let me try to do something like aluminum. Aluminum is much more reflective than gold, and all three colors of RG the RGBs are much higher. You can bring together the, the green, the red, and the blue here. Except if you bump the blue just a little bit more, you get that bluish color that is typical on aluminum. And of course you can chase, change the glossiness uh, anytime you want. And you can play with these values as you go along. So another thing you can do is Every time you use a uh, word type of reflection, you can use the uh, anisotropy values. So let's look over here at this. If you change this value to, uh, say, 0.9, almost 1, you get this. And the uh, rotation you can also change. In this case, let's say almost 100. And you get that. So we can now see what that with a little bit more of uh, subdivisions in order to render a little nicer without much noise. We can see that effect of the uh, anisotropy on the finish of the aluminum. So in a few steps, you can get this kind of output. So we will see the characteristics of materials as we go along with the next tutorials. That's all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.